Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls. Let's find a cool gesture to do. Cheat edition! I think that's a good one. Even though I have this stupid hat on that we got last time. So guys, uh, a little housekeeping thing to do here to talk about before I move on. We're gonna go back to uh, Majula and then come right back here. And as you can see, that fast travel already activated. But uh, the thing I want to talk about first is the um, that night that I fought earlier that I was debating, like, was it Tarkus, was it not? And in the end, I decided it, I didn't think it was, which is why I put the lower third thing there. Um, I can confirm that it, it is not. Definitely 100% sure that is not Tarkus. So, just wanted to clarify that. I know it didn't look like it. The only reason I thought that was because of what I said in the last episode. But anyways, it is not. So, there is that. So, since we're back here... Uh, you know what, we'll come talk to her in a moment. Let's go ahead and, uh, go let our bro in. And if you guys remember, we got his key. I can show you guys that right here. Lenagrass Key. Majula, the land of exiles, is comprised of abandoned old houses, one of which is Lenagrass has fashioned into a workshop. The house key we got last time was from Kale, the cartographer. In the past, Majula served as a dumping ground for horrible things, but is now a gathering place for those with no better place to go. It seems this house of Majula was the final home for a few such souls. So kind of an eerie backstory there, as he was telling us last time. Let's go give Lenagrass, get him back inside. Actually, I haven't even talked to him yet, but he's going to want some time, though. Ah, yes. Very good. Now I can get to work. Yes, get to work. But first, let me set up. Come again later. So that's really all he's got ah, to yes. say to us. Uh, the other thing is, I actually want to drop the Order of Blue Covenant, and then I'm going to join the Order of Champions Covenant! Uh, or maybe just not. Actually, no, I'm going to drop all of them, just so when I find a Covenant, uh, I can be part of any for the time being. If you guys want me to join a certain oh. one, let me know. <laughs> no, you do like the Covenant, the Champion one, so we can do PvPs. But, which I think is what that one's going to do. Um, I'm actually playing offline right now. The servers literally just went up. The reason I'm playing offline is just because I was kind of intrigued by the fact that I haven't Satisfied. died yet. So for my own sake, I kind of want to see how far I can get without dying. Uh, sorry, it might seem a little cheap. But don't worry, next episode I'm definitely going online now that the servers are up. 100% going to do that. So if I get invaded, I get invaded. So that's how it is. Let's use the house key. I'm going to have to level up my decks. That's what I got to do. So here we are in the mansion. There's actually a bunch of stuff here to find. First of which is a Ferris's Lockstone. So here's another one. I know I bought one, but they're going to come in handy for a lot, a lot of places here. No, I don't know if I did, actually, now that I think about it. Check for walls in here. And I kind of want to. Like, there's a lot of hidden walls in this game. There's definitely more than Dark Souls 1. Something else I didn't mention last time that um, I should mention here is repairing your equipment in this game. So if you look at your equipment, you have durability set. Right now I have 59 of 60, probably because I hit a wall. I dropped one on the durability of my weapon. Uh, that's if I press select. That's, uh, that's that right there. Now, if that goes to zero, your weapon breaks. And you can repair it by going to Lenagrast. But, if it's anywhere in between, just by going to a bonfire, it will automatically repair it back to 100%. You no longer need to worry about um, repairing it on your own that will do it for you so uh, i'm sure some people will love that some people won't okay so this right here never check this okay this right here this is the map he's referring to it's more of like a continent when you look at it at first i was really confused by it i just thought it was a weird stone slab thing but this is the map and as you light primal uh a certain type of bonfire it will appear here on this map. And I actually thought the Majula one appeared here, but I'm not seeing it. So, anyways, that's that's what this is. So, that is the map he was referring to. Let's go into this deep place. He was saying, hey, don't go into the deep place. Oh, I don't care, man. Just because there's a skeleton who's actually kind of difficult. Oh, actually, he doesn't do anything. I, I honestly, I've been finding this game a lot easier than Dark Souls 1. But it could just be because I'm a lot better now. So, anyways, he uh, uh, dropped a human effigy. He always does. He did in my other game, too. And we're going to get a soul vessel. So, soul vessels are a really interesting item. The other thing we're going to get is this. Estus flask shard. And that's why I wanted to come back. So, now we're going to have three Estus flasks 
that we can use. So right off the bat, just like that, you can have three Estus Flask. I went through the Force of Fallen Giants with just one. It can be done. It's annoying because you kind of uh, run low on life gems as if it's your first time as you're discovering things. And it makes you kind of need to travel back a little bit more. But you can have three pretty much right at the start. So there you guys go. Now this Lord Vessel is really interesting. And I'm going to go ahead and go to it. Uh, a soul vessel. The Lord Vessel. Sorry. Soul, Dark Souls 1 in my head. So, a vessel that will accept your souls. It can allow reallocation of levels, but without proper assistance, it may simply drain you of souls. If you truly wish to start again, go to the place where your journey began. So if you go back to things betwixt with this, um, that is how you become, uh, that's how you can completely reallocate your points. Now, there are multiple soul vessels in the game, and it's a one per use type of thing. Like, you use one, you give it away, you can completely reallocate your points to your stats. And it'll actually show you, it's really well done, so it shows you, like, it, it starts you back at base stats, it shows you what your stats are now, and it lets you completely reallocate it. Because I did that in my last, uh, my other playthrough, just to check it out. Wooden boxes can turn into mimics, so they're the ones that you're going to want to hit. I think you can see teeth on them, if they are a mimic. There's other, other such traps, too. So here we got a bunch of Titanite Shards, which is going to be really good here coming up. Now, for those of you guys who are wondering about the dual wielding class, uh, I finally figured it out. It kind of took me a while. Actually, part of it was with Terramantis' help, and then the dual wielding stuff was then with some more uh, thoughts and exploration into it and things like that. Oh, wait. That was it. So you can roll off here if you want. But this is how you get to the top of the house, if you were wondering that. Cool, right? Oh, I think those are the pigs. They get angry at you. I think that's what that noise was. Let's go this away. Still on the top floor. Or wait, this is going to take us back down, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so that's everything here. But a lot of really good stuff. Uh, you could just roll off the edge if you want to be quicker about getting off there. But anyways, really great place to go is in here to get everything. Like that Estus Flash shard, a bunch of Titanite shards. It's, it's again, just awesome stuff. And we're going to be able to use that now to actually level up my Heidi sword. Um, oh wait, yeah, which I want to equip. So. Is that a shard you found? Why, yes it is. Here, let me see it. So that I may help you to Why, see okay, then. however faint. So let's upgrade again, and there you go, guys. We... Can now we now have three Estus shards, so pretty awesome for Estus flask usages. And let's see, I think I have two level ups here. So if I level up Dex twice, that still might not be enough. I forgot how low this class starts off on Dex. So I still can't use my buckler, it looks like. And I think I still can't use the Heidi sword, which might suck a lot if that's the case. Yeah. Oh no, I can. Perfect. Great. At least I can use my Heidi sword. I like it a lot because it's got lightning damage. It's more of, most of the weapons in this game that are really cool seem to be quality or, um... Oh, I gotta leave and come back, apparently, if I want to go upgrade. So, let's go to Things Betwixt. There's something else I wanted to show you guys at Things Betwixt. And then we'll come back, and I'll, I'll become a dude again later. I know Kita, Kita is a little bit Gwendolyn in a lot of ways, it seems like. If you guys know what I'm talking about! I'm going to sip some soda to that. If you're watching Terror Man, it's soda. I said it, soda. He wants me to say pop because I'm from Chicago area, Chicago land. I'm from Deerfield. It's a suburb north of Chicago, if you guys are familiar with the area. So the reason I want to come back here is to talk to Millibith again. So first I could talk to her and she'll Still mention the soul vessel. I see. <laughs> Do you wish to start all over again? So here you go. So her name is Strowin, this particular firekeeper. You must go on a journey with, well, I suppose, if you find yourself at an up. Oh, this but is kind of what she said last time. Yet to so, start. It, someone no, mentioned in the comments on no, the Let's Play that I posted uh, the other day, the first Let's Play, that the fourth firekeeper is the one that you see at the beginning of the game. We don't know that, um, and I don't know that yet, because, again, I still haven't finished the game. I just got my fourth of the uh, old souls, actually, so I've made a, a decent amount of progress here. But, um, I I honestly don't know yet who the fourth firekeeper is. I think it's possible that's that lady we see in the intro, but I really don't know. 
You have proven yourself to the forest. Yes, I have. We have little to offer, except perhaps So these. I have no idea what I did to prove myself, honestly. I don't know if it was defeating those two trolls. I think that might be the case. May they bring fortune to your journey. In so she gives me this ladle, and if you attack her, this is what she's actually going to attack you with if you aggro her. The handmaid's ladle. An ordinary kitchen ladle. He who chooses this as a weapon either faces ex extenuating circumstances or has an odd sense of humor. If you care for your life, leave this one in the kitchen. But uh, she brutally hurts you with it, so what does that say about her? There you see that ladle. Look at that thing. I'm gonna club you to death with my ladle. How about that? <laughs> I love it. I love it. I think it's hilarious. So then, okay, there we go. Her again talking about the fourth sister. Sista, Sista Act 2. This is Sista Act 4, actually, because there's four sisters. <laughs> I'm full of lame jokes today. I don't know, man. I'm just hyped up, guys, because I'm really loving Dark Souls 2. So, um, like I said last time, even though I do have some qualms with it that I mentioned last time, I'm really loving the game. So, I'm just excited to be sharing these experiences with you guys. Hopefully, um, I know I'm not fully through it. But hopefully you guys can learn some of the exploration stuff and some things from me and little tidbits. Uh, for those of you guys who haven't played the game yet because maybe you live in uh, the UK or another area where you can't get it. Or maybe you're a PC player, I'm sorry. Um, thanks for watching if you are watching. I hope I'm not ruining things too much for you guys. And for everyone else, hopefully this actually might give you some strategies if you guys are watching right as the starts. Um, just for some things you might have missed. You, stand back. This is I really like the um, name's Lenigrast. I really like Lenigrast. Just a simple blacksmith. And you are uh, uh <laughs> another useless traveler. I say that as he talks shit about me. A man ought to labor with his feet planted firmly in the earth. I actually do like him though. Not roam around like you flirtatious vagabonds. You know it. Pretty flirtatious. Oh, what does it matter? Go on. Show me what you've got. All right, Lena Grass. All equipment. Let me have a look, but do it quick. Okay, so check this out, buddy, buddy, buddy. We're gonna Drat. talk to you first. <laughs> You're worse than my reckless daughter. Don't spend your whole life in transit. You hear? So we're actually gonna get to meet her. Now he looks pretty hollowed you out, need doesn't souls he? Souls to repair and improve. How does it like zombies to me now? I know only of smithing. But souls have many other uses as well. Don't waste your souls on useless trinkets. Think before you spend. So cool, he's actually giving us some advice the there. Equipment can be strengthened with rare ore stone. But such ore stone won't come easily. I'm finally My starting to find a word knows to, um, stones. Where to grind from out them. Prancing about. But that's the thing I was thinking about, actually. Now, there's a time for travels. Even you must have someone waiting back home. All right, sorry, I wanted to check his Drat. dialogue. Okay, that's Don't it. Spend. We've exhausted it. Um, oh man, I lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, so the, the uh, farming. The, the thing to me is that I've been thinking about is like, okay, well I don't care about farming for souls anymore. At least I feel like I'm good enough. I don't. I don't even think about it. At least I haven't in Dark Souls Two. When I first played Dark Souls One, I did. I never did after the first time playing it, and then playing Dark Souls 2, I've never thought, oh man, I better farm for souls and level up. I never thought that once. But, I was thinking, like, what about farming for Titanite Shards and large Titanite Shards and Titanite Chunks and other types of things? That is where I'm worried about, and I found some of the enemies, there's a couple who I found who drop large Titanite Shards, and I just go and ahead and equip uh, armor that makes us have higher item drop ratings to get them and try to get more, but that does have me kind of concerned, I gotta say. But let's go ahead and start reinforcing this uh, Heidi Black Knight Sword. Actually, it looks like we need more souls. So, that is why I had the Soul of the Proud Knight. Ooh, that's a lot of souls. This is going to be pretty yep. awesome. So, even though I'm, um... Even though I'm going to probably go quality, or not quality, probably go dex here with my build... I'm going to go ahead and level this one up a bunch because I actually do really like it. Alright, and I've only got one Titanite Shard, so there we go. Got it up to plus two, so that's going to help us out a bunch. And I could level this up, but I'm not going to. I could level up the ladle. Ooh. Ooh. 
I don't have any of the weapon uh, armor that I want wrong. yet, so I'm not gonna do that. Um, so two-handing, you can actually two-hand in this game, and to do that, you literally just two-hand your weapons. And notice how I have one and two. Now, if I press tap Y, I'm gonna use my right weapon two-handed. Now, if you hold down Y, you're gonna pull out your left-handed weapon, and you use the left buttons to do it. And now, right's gonna make you block the same type of way you would. Now, if you want to actually do the double strikes that you guys may have seen, and this was throwing me off for a while because I was, it was kind of driving me crazy. Look at my equipment load. Your equipment load has to be below 50%. So notice it's in the red zone above 50%. Below 50%, you're in that blue zone, and that's when you can dual wield properly. So now if I hold down tap Y, it's going to be normal dual wielding. If I hold down Y, wait a second. Oh, this worked for me last time. Maybe it just doesn't work with a dagger. Let's see if I have another sword that'll work. Uh, okay, I'm going to unequip some armor just to show this. Fire long sword, how about... Okay. Wait, what? It's not working now. Hmm. Okay, this was working for me before. Maybe I was just using the right type of weapons. Well, that's interesting. All right, now I feel like an idiot. I was giving you guys an explanation. I was completely wrong. Oh, I'm still learning things, guys. I'm sorry. I really thought that was the case. If you guys know, um, and it's not written in the comments, please do go forth and say what it is in the comments. Seek how to do it. If uh, if my tutorial was wrong, which it seems to be, it might just be certain weapons. I'm honestly not sure now. Let's go ahead and level up our decks again. We'll get some more. Notice how I don't get that much more uh, right-handed weapon attack. Yeah, it's because the scaling's not going to be that great on this, but it's okay. Anyways, um, yeah, if no one else has commented, please do check. Because I don't want to get bombarded by comments, especially a year after this video has been released. But um, if you guys do know the answer to this, go ahead and please do answer. About that dual wielding thing, because I really thought I was just holding Y when your equipment low is 50%. Because I was doing some tests with my other character, and that seemed to be the case. Like any weapon combo I was using, under 50% did the trick. It might have just been the case of my dexterity was high enough. It might have been something like that. I'm really not sure. There might be some more stat points to it that factor into it, like a combined dexterity or something like that. Uh, again, I'm not sure. So I guess a uh, terrible tutorial on my part. <laughs> That's what happens when you're just starting the game. All right, let's go ahead and face some bosses. What, what say you guys? I say I. Oh, see that lightning damage? You can actually see the lightning coming off on them, which is pretty badass. So say I. Oh. <laughs> Whoops. I don't think I checked these walls before. No. Okay, cool. It was actually, uh, I, I learned how to, about how many secret passages there were. I figured that out a little bit after this area. So there's some that I really, I'm kind of going back and trying to recheck now. Like, ooh, I gotta check this one out. We're gonna get this guy backstab. Oh, yeah. You didn't see it coming, because it was a backstab, and you don't see those coming. That's kind of the point of a backstab. This is kind of interesting here, and I'm gonna go ahead and try to face this. So at first I thought this was like a dragon moment. I think that's a hawk. It might be a falcon, but I'm pretty sure it's a hawk. And so this hawk is actually gonna drop this guy off. This is one of the bosses, and he floats. So, oh crap! Okay, come on, come on, you got this. Pursuer. Oh, that's yeah, that's who it is. This is the pursuer. Okay, come on. Let's, let's do. Oh, really? Get out of here, guy. Oh, shoot. This is not cool. I got a pursuer to deal with, and more people are coming to attack me. So last time I. Crap. I think that might have been losing the duel. So, yeah, he warps away. Mmm, I wonder what happens if you kill him. I'm really curious. The last time I was like, I just got a heal, so I ran off the heal. Oh, that's gotta be cool. I wonder what happens. Hmm. 
Well, my bad. My bad on not being able to show that. Oh, I was like, I landed on... Oh, wait. This is what I landed on before. I wonder if there's any shortcuts down there. Looks like there's something. Hmm. Running on this ledge I'm now is something I'm kind of tempted to do now. Oh, yeah. You don't kick anymore either, by the way. Tapping up and uh, tapping the right button is now going to make you do that, like, slap away thing. Which is the new version of it. One, two, and you're gone. And let's pull this guy over here so I don't get bombarded by firebombs. I said over here. Going the wrong way. So he's the type... Oh, really? Really? Okay. Alright. Slap you away, and then we'll take care of you. See, that's perfect. I was talking about slapping. He gave us a chance to slap. Then he practically killed me with the power of the other guy. This is where I'm glad that I have all these Estus Flasks now. Uh, I'm sad about the Pursuer thing, though. I really do wonder. That's something. That's like a good challenge, I think. Maybe it's like better to just go try it later. All right. So this is a trap. I th think this might be the best way to handle it, because otherwise, all three of these guys are gonna rush out at you. So I think the best way to handle it is actually come to them like this. Um, you can use these, by the way, which I think is an online play important thing. Using these, like someone joins your game. Got a second shield here, blue wooden shield, which maybe we can actually use. Stat-wise. And we can. So now we actually have a shield I can use, for real. Not gonna have the same parry, but that's alright. And, since I got some ferris stones, we can use what's down here. So let's go ahead and do that. So this door is going to be locked. We can't open that one. But, but, and actually something I've been wanting to test out. I'm curious about. Nope. Alright, so, ferris stones unlock various hidden secrets by using the lock stones. And they all do different things. And there's some that actually seem, I couldn't figure out what they are, like filling wells or something. Like, a lot of them are different, but this particular one shows a secret passage, old school style, that you have to hit with a sword. And we're gonna get some awesome stuff here that is really useful. So we're gonna get the a Titanite Slab. And there you go, already got your Titanite Slab there. At least one. And a Chlorinthy Ring, so... Another good ring. And something I didn't mention last time is you do have four ring slots now. Uh, which is pretty crazy, and I'm kind of curious to see how well that's going to end up balancing out. Uh, oh, this one looked like a mimic to me. I guess I was... I don't know. Oh, oh, that's a trap. Okay. So I think I, adaptability also affects how long you have to react to those traps, but I'm not positive, so I could be wrong on that. I'm still trying to figure out and test adaptability stuff. I think Oro Boro the Ninja actually has a great uh, explanation on all the stats and a uh, video that he just released today, but uh, this is the day of the game. Actually, this is uh, the midnight of the game releasing. So this is Pate, and he's sort of like the new patches. Hello there. Traveling but he doesn't coerce you necessarily times. to do things. Well, I hope you have a very good reason. Because I'm undead, yo. Who am I to judge? <laughs> My name is Pate. I journey hither and thither on a sort of treasure hunt, you might call it. Be careful out there. There's talk of unsavory bandits who prey upon travelers like yourself. Oh yes, you be cautious if you go any farther. There's treasure in there for certain but the entrance locks from behind. I saw the same design earlier, and it's the same contraption, I'm sure. I was with this warrior, you see, and he insisted that he go inside first. We're gonna meet him <laughs> later on. The rather brusque fellow tried to swipe the loot for himself, but it trapped him inside. I still have the gent's ring. I do hope he wasn't harmed. I really am so tempted to kill Pate and find out what the ring says. 
but not going to do it right now because I haven't done it yet in my own game. So I'm curious what uh, the ring he is holding, what it says. But the other guy um, actually is pissed off at Pate or claims to be. It's kind of this thing where it's like he said, he said, he said, she said, he said, he said. They both uh, blame each other. But here we have Pate clearly helping us out because if you do walk into it clo that, it closes behind you. He actually seems happy for you if you made it out. So he's not like Patches because he actually warns you. I'll leave this one to you. I'm worried about what might be inside. See, later on, though, he felt a little more patches. He, later on, he feels a little more patches to me. I'll leave this one. But still, I'm, uh, I'm really not sure on that. Who's, who's actually being uh, honest. Alright, we'll let you go. Oh, man. I just... Come on. Oh. I'm gonna aggro you. And, oh, he's running at me. There is a reason I try to aggro him draw him out here, is to see if I can do this. Which actually was Vadi's strategy. Let's do this! <laughs> oh, I'm so happy that worked. I think he's actually pretty easy to dodge out of the way of all of this stuff. Like, literally, all you have to do is... You wait for him to attack, roll backwards, come in, attack once, roll backwards... Well, that usually that works, but... Anyways, pretty much if you do that strategy, it should work. I clearly messed it up, but um, that that works pretty well against him. He's not as difficult as he looks, maybe your first time through. So we got a bunch of areas to go over here. So remember that this area is called the Forest of Fallen Giants, right? And I was telling you guys that the trees look like giants, as the um, Melentia was telling us. Here you go. This is actually a giant turned into a tree. And we're not able to do anything with it yet. And actually, in my own game, I'm not quite sure what to do with it yet. But um, hopefully, it will be discovered soon. But anyways, I shouldn't be ruining it anyways for people who aren't trying to go into it fairly fresh. But yeah, so there you go. That's a, that's actually a giant right there that's been turn, uh, starting to turn into a tree. So exactly as she said. So, Melentia, give you give you major props on that, because you're being honest. And correct. You are so correct. So if we go to the right up here from the top, we're actually going to get to uh, those firebomb assholes. But first I'm going to go over to this left side here. And this is actually another way to get to that area that he was saying uh, the door closes. Now, if you walk into there, you're actually going to kind of get bombarded by a bunch of enemies at once, and it's sort of a trap. This way, you're able to um, at least somewhat avoid the trap. There still are a bunch of enemies you got to deal with, but it's not nearly as bad. So you can see, like, okay, you can kind of take them one at a time for the most part. So this is going to be the way uh, that you're going to want to go around this area. As opposed to just running headlong into that door. And hopefully I won't get hurt while I'm trying to get away. Oh no 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 no! Oh no no! We were doing so good! Oh. Okay. That was just not smart play on my part. I was trying to just R1 spam. And that's why people say R1 spammers aren't good. Ah! Running R1! And hollow shoulder sold the hollow soldier shield. And there's actually a secret entrance here. I believe it's right here. So there you go. There's actually here's your first secret passage. I was tapping A to open that. And we're gonna get some um, I believe a catalyst in here. Switch over to life gems. Sorcerer's staff. So if we go to the sorcerer's staff. That's going to be our first catalyst. So, to use sorceries, attune a sorcery, add a bonfire, and equip a staff. The strength of most sorceries is affected by the caster's intelligence. Um, I'm straight up stupid. I've got four attunement slots on there. You need ten to be able to have one attunement slot. My intelligence is at three, face at six. Uh, looks like I'm not doing magic for a long time, which is going to piss off some NPCs I want to talk to. So maybe I'll have to re uh, adjust everything at some point. Sooner rather than later. But again, like, normally you would have, like, all three of these guys kind of running at you at once. And this is why it's just better to go this way. Right here. 
so there you have it. And see, so just walking in this area, like he said, like Pete said, that closed behind us. So yeah, he was just being completely straightforward with us. And I, I believe, yeah, that wraps up this whole little spot here in this section. Uh, the main thing to find really, I think, is that secret passage. If you're trying to do sorcery and don't have it. Oh! Oh, finally, Ragdoll! Yeah, something I didn't mention is they got rid of Ragdoll effects in this one. Uh, I like the Ragdoll effects. I actually thought they were fun. But I'm sure it takes up more memory and it's harder that way. Um, so you probably can't do as good of graphics and such if you do that. So that's probably why they made that sacrifice. Or they just wanted it to not seem ridiculous. Well, I don't know. I see you managed to escape. I hope that brave warrior didn't come a cropper either. So again, see, he's being nice here. Be careful out there. There's talk of unsavory bandits who prey upon travelers like yourself. So again, oh. give us that warning. But you should take this. And here he's also going to give us the white sign soapstone. So he also gives us the white sign soapstone so we can go summon ourselves in other people's worlds. It, with luck, somebody will lend you a hand. Well, didn't need to skip that. Well... Be so, well. yeah, anyways, here's our white sign soapstone, so we got, actually got our soapstone there, and this is who we got it from, Pate, so I mean, it seems like he can't be that bad of a guy if he's giving me a white sign soapstone. Be summoned to a phantom to another world in order to help that world's master for a certain time. You will be rewarded with a token of fidelity for successfully assisting the other player. I believe you need a token of fidelity to join the blue sentinels, who we'll come across later, who, as I was telling you guys, are the ones who help out all the blue, um, the way of the blue. I was really looking into the rings and everything, and that's definitely what it is. The blue sentinels are summoned to help people who are part of the way of blue. So that's, uh, specifically what it is, is they're like the guardians for those people. So, way of the blue, more of a beginner's covenant. Blue sentinels, more of an advanced covenant to help people who want that help from an advanced covenant. Uh, so kind of a cool way they did it. I actually like that system because you're specifically joining a covenant saying Yes, I want help from experts, which is what I would assume that the blue sentinel brotherhood You would be uh, role-playing as if you joined that So I personally like that choice. Oh, that's right. I forgot a good thing. I was tricking I don't know if I got this in my other save actually. I don't know if I noticed this Oh, Not that it's much but at least from here we can drop down and do pull off a drop attack. Into kind of a bit of an ambush. No, 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 no. Crap. Ah. There we go. That was a close call there. You don't need to take these guys out at all, but uh, it's just good to run up here and get this stuff. So you got a mail breaker and an infantry hum. I don't believe they have interesting lore to them, but let's go ahead and look at them. Uh, the mail breaker has, is a limited reach, but powerful critical attack, effective against foes donning thick armor. So kind of just like it was before, and I'm I'm positive that the hum doesn't say anything. Yeah, see, helmet worn by Drang Lake Infantry. This is a helm worn by Hollowed Infantry, a piece of basic minimal equipment. Worse yet, it's worn and nearly falling apart. So. Um, yeah, they, they don't really have that much interesting lore. Um, I feel like a lot of items aren't packed with lore, like Dark Souls 1, but eventually, don't worry guys, we will get to some really cool lore items and such. So do not be too worried. So I think that this is a really cool area up here. And I will show you guys why. Uh, that door we're not going to be able to open yet. That's where we came from. Well, thank you for swinging at me. I was able to take advantage of that. And I was able to take advantage of your one, too. So this is going to be a trap, but a giant sword. And if you guys remember when they were showing off E3 stuff, that was actually um, what they were showing off for E3 was a dwarf up there throwing axes at you. Not the case here. I don't know if there's a way, maybe in New Game Plus or something, that that's what it becomes, or if it was just the sake of, like, we're just going to show it off this way. But you guys can definitely tell, like, yes, that's not the case. So that Hollow is who I'm trying to get to follow down, who's up there. Come on, Hollow. Come on. 
Don't want to aggro this guy yet. Oh, man. Okay. And I aggroed him. I just don't want to get trapped on this thing. There we go. Perfect. Roll it away, and then we'll deal. And we'll deal. Easy peasy. Easy spleasy. All right, let's go ahead and grab this, and then look at this awesome, magnificent here. Giant sword thrown down here, stuck in the, stuck in the wall. Like, and it's just part of a statue. It's part of this statue right there. So, how, how did his hand get all the way over here? Like, that is this statue's hand. Because if you look at this statue, which is the same thing, it's got its hand, it's got its shield, and it's missing its head, which we'll actually, I believe, we see later, but... Um, yeah. Oh, man, this is just such a cool view. I, I just love how this part looks, this place. Uh, so then this one's got its shield, and this one's got its head. But as you can see, hand somehow ended up over here. And now the, the possible assumption is maybe there was... This is where all the fallen giants are here, and the war was taking place here. Um, perhaps it's a case of... It was the giants doing it, or somehow the battle was so heated, the giants knocked it down there. Uh, they're not that big, so uh, just really cool stuff. Oh, oh, that's right, this guy. Oh, sword at risk. I. Ugh, okay, I'm gonna go use the bonfire. Actually, you know what? Yeah, let's use the bonfire and come back here. So I can just get that stuff. Because I'm going to want to use this sword anyways against the boss. But anyways, this will show you guys what I was talking about. So, right now I've got 6 durability, right? Now, if I go to the bonfire, this is going to heal me up completely with that durability. To the max. So here we go with the bonfire. And if I wanted to, I could warp to and level up a couple times, but that's okay. Uh, we don't need to. So, let's go ahead and look at the weapon now. My durability is now 70. So you can see... Um, yes, it did work. I've got full on that. Now, if it broke, I could just go to um, our blacksmith friend and have him fix it for me. But it ain't worth the souls, guys. It ain't worth the souls. Yeah, so these guys are actually the ones who disappeared on me earlier. Because I've just been like, going down here a lot when I was exploring for things. And... Uh, just trying to figure out, like, oh, I think I missed another exploration thing, and they eventually just disappeared. So that was how I found that out. Let's see if I can actually take care of this guy this time. Oh, nope, 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 nope. Come on. Yeah! Titanite shards. Ooh, that was not a good one. Although I could go back now. I actually have enough Titanite shards to reach this up to plus three. Which I'm not going to do right away. I'll do it after the boss. Who I'm not going to ruin. Large leather shield. Life gem there. Some more drops. Um, I don't believe there's any secret passages in this particular one. I have checked. I have checked. Um, again, I could be wielding the torch right now. But there's just no reason to. This area is pretty bright. Some of the areas I thought were going to be bright or darker haven't been. But there are. Don't worry. There are dark areas in the game. And there are areas where you definitely need the torch to progress properly. And there are a lot of areas where you don't, so uh, there's a good mix of them. That kind of reminds me of Undeadburg in a lot of ways. Firelink Shrine. This is going to be a locked door. Can't go through that one. And, oh, I wonder who you summon here. Mild-mannered Pate. Oh, and Pate even comes to help you. He's definitely a good bro. Definitely a good bro. I didn't, I didn't realize that. So, it's definitely another guy. Here we go. Guys, remember this from the uh, curse trailer? I was saying it looked kind of Ulusiel in a way to me, but I was apparently way off, so. I admit it. I admit it. I will admit when I'm wrong. It's just he's got all these things stuck through him. Any long arms. Alright, you gotta stop groaning at me so we can do this thing. There's so many cool bosses in this game. It's one. It's 
Uh, I just love all the boss fights. So this is the last giant. The last giant. We've seen all those other giants throughout. Here you have the last one. I suppose... Oh, I'm actually surprised he hit me with that. I don't need life gems. What am I doing? But this guy's boss is really easy. So all you have to do is get, uh, get next to him and let him sweep at you. If he stomps, you can roll away from it pretty easily because he's so slow. And actually, you can hit his other foot while he's going to stomp at you. So see that? I'm just literally, like, letting him stomp. And now he's swinging, so I have a chance for two attacks. And... I'm going to get in front of him and let him swing at me again, roll through his legs, get a couple attacks in. Until now where he rips off his arm, because he's crazy. Yo, you crazy. Ripping off your arm like that? What's wrong with you, Last Giant? So this is actually kind of sad to me because of Game of Thrones, and if you guys know Game of Thrones and the whole Last Giant song, blah, 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 blah. whole Last Giant song thing, it's a little sad. Uh, we just killed the last giant, guys. Mm, don't know how I feel about that. But we got the soldier key, so that's pretty badass. And we got a whole bunch of- whole crap ton of souls. Let's look at the soldier key. There's actually a bunch of stuff this is gonna unlock for us. Key to the soldier's door in the forest of fallen giants. A fort was erected in the forest to face the giants, but now the soldiers are lost and hollowed. They are enfeebled, but not without honor, and continue to steadfastly defend their country. So... Cool little uh, tidbit there, I think. What was the last giant? I, I guess like it looked like the last giant had various weapons and stuff stuck in him, and he just kind of given up. What? I, what? That's new to me. Is that a glitch? Or maybe, maybe there's also a boss through here. I haven't gotten through here yet in my game, and that's why he's there. Hmm. Very interesting. But if it's like, just kidding, that wasn't the last giant. Here's the real last giant! So I have a couple options for ways that I can go at this point. There's actually three doors that just opened up to me. Uh, one of them I think is pointless to go through, so I don't think I'm going to. The other one is kind of pointless, but I, I think it'd be fun to show you guys anyway. So I'll go to that one to show you guys. Then I'm going to level up, and you'll see why I'm dealing with doing the level up. So here's one of the three. They actually all look like this. All the doors that you can open. All three of them. So. Gonna get us some chests. Some chesty chests. Ring of Restoration. Oh. Oh, I forgot that was there. Okay. Uh, so gradually restores HP. A protective ring passed down in House of Asteria gradually restores HP. In the sacred land of Lindelt, this ring symbolizes prosperity and longevity for the great House of Asteria. But the ring is fragile and breaks easily as it hates being taken for granted. So see that has like... It has 70 on it. That's not that bad. I was kind of worried to wear it because I was worried it would break forever. And now I'm not sure. If anyone knows, drop that in the comments. And Man, I should know all these things. <laughs> Like I said, in the middle of playing through, I was afraid to equip it because I was afraid it would break, but now that I'm looking at it, it's got 70 durability. That's a lot. Produce the symbol of the king. There are a couple of these doors. Um, not sure how you get that symbol of the king. I have a couple theories on it, but I don't want to say it yet because it could be spoilery. Uh, probably not, but I just don't, don't feel like it's a good idea to, just in case. But that's so... Though that door opened, the other door that opened that I can go to just to show you guys is this door. I'm not going to because it's pretty stupid to go through that one right now. There's really no reason to. So what I'm going to go do is level up just because it's smart and also raise up my, um, raise up my sword. And this is the one thing that can kind of get annoying about the whole Maiden in Black thing. Like if I want to level up, I do. I have to do this. I have to warp back to Majula. To level up. I'm hoping there's a real good lore implication for why. Because I still don't know very much about the Emerald Herald for where I'm at. Pretty curious, though. I still love that they do that, that they have the item descriptions. I'm glad they brought that back. Okay, first thing we're going to do is use our souls to level up our, uh, our sword again. Because let's... Let's just do it. I knew. 
So buy item, don't need to. He actually, he's gonna sell a couple of Titanite shards if you need them. And repair powders, so you can repair on your own. But I mean, things rarely break. It's easy to tell and you can just switch your weapon. So there we go, Heidi Grit Sword, let's uh, raise it up again. And as you can see, the thing that's kind of moving up in the scaling is strength and lightning. Like, you can see that's blue, this that's getting better, not the deck stat, which is why I'm raising. But that's okay, I actually really like this sword, so... I'm okay with it. We need a large Titanite Shard, as per usual, just like in Dark Souls, to do it again. There are Demon Souls style embers in this game too. I think it took a lot from Demon Souls actually in terms of the um, embers and the way embers work, to be honest. There's like bleed stones, poison stones, things like that, that are, and tons and tons of them Bearer that are very the Demon Souls. Seek so, seek the king, lest this land. Lest this land swallow you whole. How about I level up a bunch? Let's do that. That'd make me happy. Ooh, 19. That would be awesome, but I'm not going to. Alright, let's uh, raise up some vitality as well and some endurance. Actually, let's do. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna like this. Right now, my equip load is not. Ooh, actually, equip load might be a bigger deal in just a moment now that I think about it. Uh, eh, let's do this. So, Endurance is going to give me Stamina and Poise, and that's why I want Endurance mainly, is for Stamina. Vitality is going to increase your Equip Load, and a lot of, um, a lot of armor actually scales with Vitality, which I'll show you guys if I can. So, and then these are, as you guys know, I'm, I like leveling up my decks, and I also like leveling up my Adaptability, so. Uh, because I love getting that Agility. So, that's what we shall do. Just reach a whole number of levels there. Alright, let's see if I can show you guys what I'm talking about with the armor. So, yeah, so you can see this one has an A scaling with your, uh, with your endurance, um, I forget the name of the stat, I'm sorry. Yeah, with your endurance, or no, vitality, with your vitality. So, this one has B vitality scaling, A vitality scaling, and uh, that's actually something that scales with that, so it makes your armor a lot better, so that's something they added in here. So let's go back to the Cardinal Tower, and we're going to head towards the next boss instead of the wraparound area that I don't think there's anything important at. We'll come back there eventually, but I think, uh, I think it'd be fun to go to the next boss. Don't you guys think so? Because we can. Happening, happening episode this time. But man, I'm so mad I didn't beat the Pursuer. I'm so mad. I know I could. I definitely could have. Could have, should have, would have. I should have just stayed in the other corner. Next time I do a playthrough, I'm definitely doing that. Alright. Let's go ahead and roll down. Roll down. Take out these guys again, because even though I'm going to be going the other way. The only way to not have to have them following me. I know you guys like me. I know you're my stalkers, but uh, enough's enough, I say. Enough is enough, I say. Switch over to life gems for a moment. Shoot, I forgot about that. Wow, my bad, my bad. Oh, 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 oh! Already out of, already out of stamina. That's why I was trying to raise it up. Stop hiding behind your shield. Stop hiding behind your shield as I play stupidly and not smartly. And here you go. So here's the third door of the three that the soldier key opens up. And we're going to get another couple guys here to deal with. They're actually better about avoiding backstabs as you just noticed. Hopefully. Because that's actually what I was wrapping around for there. Oh, I'm lucky he wasn't quicker. And yeah, I think I'm finding a lot of items just because I'm wearing this hat. It definitely helps. As stupid looking as it is. Ugh. Ugh. Alright. There you see another boss fog gate. But before we do that, let's go up here. And get this item. And now we can go ahead and face the pursuer. Now at this point there are multiple paths you can go, and I actually 
Uh, the Pursuer you can be, he's pretty rough, but there are some rough tidings past here that I'd recommend going the other way first at this point. Like, beat the Pursuer. Oh, if only I beat him before. If only I beat him before. Alright, Pursuer. You and me, as you float around like a madman. Yeah, the first time I saw him in my cave, I was like, I see started floating on that platform. I was like, nope! I need to heal. No. So, yeah, if, if you have room. Oh, I'm doing a nice amount of damage to him. Like, this is really all you have to do. He'll break that thing. I've tried using it on him, uh, shooting at him, but I don't know. I think it's hard to be able to. Yeah, feel that. Feel the wrath of my lightning damage. You can call me Lord Gwyn. Bitch! Lord Gwyn in the house! Oh, shit! Lord Gwyn just got royally fucked. <laughs> that would be pretty funny. Like, as soon as I start shit-talking, he destroys me. It's like, nope. When he, when his sword glows blue like that, I have never been hit by it, but I think that's like true danger. I want to pop a life gem here. Let's let's play it safe. And I think my uh, iframes are already better than they started as. But yeah, so like doing this whole dodging thing really is kind of the way to go, I think. No, I'm not gonna let you do that to me. Or that. Oh shoot. Too far away. I rolled too far for you, Pursuer. Oh, he got me that time. Man, that's not cool. Most people would have flown off an edge there, but you didn't because you can float. Oh gosh. Oh gosh, that one scares me. I've never been hit by it, but it scares the crap out of me. Alright, Pursues. Pursues? <laughs> oh, that was terrible. Ooh, okay, well, I can get two on that one, definitely. Pop a light gem here. Oh. Alright. I wonder if you get, like, extra bonus points for being able to hit him with the giant crossbow things. Oh, shit. I've been talking all this shit, and he might have me there. Alright. We're getting close. This should be a two-hitter on that one. And again, just gonna keep playing it safe. You know, no reason to rush it. Especially so he doesn't hit me with his blue sword attack. That scares the bejesus out of me. Okay, here we go. This is it. R2 for the kill. Oh, Pursuer is gone. Victory achieved. So you got a Ring of Blades, which I really like. And Soul of the Pursuer. Actually, let's look at both of these souls. I can't believe I forgot to do that. We're all about lore, guys. We're all about lore. Soul of the Last Giant. Soul of the Surviving Giant who was bound below the Force of the Giants. Many seasons had come and gone, and the giant prepared for his final rest, but his soul remained a magnificent testimony magnif but his soul remained magnificent testimony to his former strength. Uh, and then you got the soul of the pursuer. Soul of the pursuer who lurks Strangleic. The pursuer who seeks the bearer of the sign will not rest until his target is slain. I believe the sign would be the dark sign that they're referring to. Uh, there's also more info on him about who he was. I believe he was actually a knight of King Vendrix, if I remember correctly. So, see this? That's the head right there. So there you've got the head of that other knight back there. So how, somehow that head got knocked off all the way here. So, uh, it's pretty wild. Now here we have another, uh, another giant there. And again, I'm not sure uh, what to do with them yet, but another last giant. Now, don't don't just dismiss this part right here. Actually look down and you'll see there's a secret part, spot right here. And if we start going down here and be careful about our drops, 
you'll notice that there is this here, which is a giant set, the Drangleic Mail, Drangleic Shield, Drangleic Sword, Drangleic Everything set. So this armor is awesome. It scales with Twinkling Titanite, which may be not that good. But other than that, it's really good. Captain Dramon's shield, even with its embossing terribly worn, this shield exudes pride and authority. An heirloom passed from grandfather to father, and then from father to son, Drummond and those before him held the shield when facing those who would threaten their great land. And we can also look at the Drangleic Sword. Great Sword of Drummond, Royal Army Captain, an old and unordained sword perhaps, but the pride and joy of this venerable captain. And there we have again that it was an heirloom. But I'm not going to use those because that, as you can see, is basically it's a great sword. Uh, and I don't have the stats for it at all. At all. Even though it's more of a quality weapon that scales with dex, surprisingly. So I am curious about what that's going to do once you level up. I haven't tried leveling up that one up. But this is what it looks like. Heck, so it looks badass. Oh, whoops. I just wanted to see what it looked like. It was a swinging attack. Uh, so let's go ahead and re-equip our Heidi Sword. Hades Sword. And... Here's why I'm talking about the Drangle Leg. I'm talking it up. Uh, even though this is gonna bump us up from 47.9 to 61%, look at that difference in the stats. Like, that is crazy. Uh, how much higher everything is there. Like, look at that. So... You're in the wrong area. So you can see, like, physical defense is higher, slash all that, all that way higher, and the poise way higher. So this male also looks badass. So I'm just going to equip this part of it right now, uh, just because it is pretty heavy on me. Oh, I thought I almost dropped a little too far. But, uh, yeah, this male is really badass. I don't think wearing heavy stuff affects you as much as it used to. I'm starting to, I think sometimes maybe it, you can't roll quite as far, but I really haven't noticed much difference. It does seem like I'm not moving as far forward with my roll, but I, it might just be in my head. Really. So, anyways, this equipment is totally BA, and that is how you find it. So, there you go, guys. Hopefully, even though uh, I'm still fresh to this myself, I'm still able to drop some cool hit, hints and tidbits for you guys that you might have missed. Um, so yeah, exploration again, always key. So here's that other guy that we saw in the distance. And let's go ahead and check out uh, what looks like the crow nest. Like a snuggly the crow nest or a crow nest the crow that took you, Falcus crow. But this time it's going to be a falcon who's going to take you or a hawk, whichever it is. Falcon Hawk. What one of the two? Yep. <laughs> it's getting late. So here we are at the last best deal. Or lost best deal. But it's a best deal nonetheless. The Lost Best Deal. And we get to start right away at a bonfire. I do not recommend this area at all, except... Except there's a key you're going to want to grab here before you leave and go to the other next area. So let's go ahead and grab that, and then that'll wrap us up for this Let's Play. Unfortunately, I can't go fight that guy if I want this. And I'm kind of taking a risk here with all these souls. But, um... Yeah, hopefully I won't die. Ooh, large Titanite Shard. Now I can level this my sword up again. So, maybe risk is well worth it. Don't like these guys at all. Alright. Wanted to do that. Take care of that guy from above. That's why I went this way. And then we got a couple dogs. Hopefully I can jump down on one of them. Nope. I could not. As it turns out. One, 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 one. One more. Okay. Don't want to get bleed damage on me at all. Man, this is crazy. It's, can't believe I still haven't died yet. Alright, so. There is a reason we're going this way that you guys shall see in just a moment. So, there's not much here except for this little baby over here. That we're going to want to find before we go to the other side of the last best deal. Lost best deal. 
the antiquated key and the covetous silver serpent ring. I'm gonna equip the covetous silver serpent ring because I like it in this game. I actually I do like having it. Oh, I forgot the ring of blaze. So the ring of blaze increases physical attack. The Ring of Blaze is modeled after the Mad Knight of Alkin's weapon of choice, increases physical attack. The kingdoms of Valken and Ven long ago flourished. Oh, Valken and Ven. I wonder if Ven is like Ven Vendrick? Long ago flourished on these very grounds. That would be where we were before. Uh, where the giants were. They were both founded by the same man, but were reduced by to rivalry and spite. And a couple of the silver ring, serpent ring. The silver ring depicting the snake, both the servant and manifestation of the god of greed, Zandro. So there you remember when in another game they was talking about serpents represented greed? Here we have a god for it now, Zandro. Greed is traditionally viewed as vice, but only a fool allows that to ruin a good opportunity. Which those extra souls are. Screw you, blue seal ring, I don't care about you. We're getting... Not that. We're getting the cover of the silver serpent ring. Instead. And I can attack for more. So, that is what you get here. And that, that, uh... Sorry, that key. That key was the key. That's really why I wanted to go here. So, antiquated key. This key is very old, but in very good condition, such that it should still function. Only what lock does the key fit in? This lock is in the Lost Bastille, and it's uh, we're, there's going to be another way to come back here, so that is why I wanted to grab that. Let me just check for some secret passages first, now that I know to do it here. Nothing. Nothing. And it looks like we are hidden um, about an hour here, so... I honestly think these mummies are really easy. And then I almost got hit. Like, you can roll through them, hit them twice, and then be careful, roll through, hit them twice, roll through. Actually, I'm gonna do- let- okay. And then you can always get stunned from that second attack, as long as you're two-handed. And that's basically how you deal with it. Oh, actually, we got someone to talk to as well. We got another NPC. Man, so much stuff happening here. Now, there's really no way to get back over there that I know of. Uh, except for a Homeward Bone, which is what I'm going to do here in a moment. In a moment's respite. What is it? I wanted to say hi. Notice how it's a woman, know you, but and you look closely. you don't know me. Things are better that way. I'm trying to get the good zoom on her. Yeah, there you go. See? Beard. Turns out that's a mask, as you can probably tell at this point, with that whole beard thing. What is it? <laughs> you are an odd one. I'm crazy. Look at the stupid Normally, hat I'm wearing. People and monocle, keep a safe of course distance I'm odd. when they see this mask. But you. With me, I dance. I'm called Lucatil. I dance. I dance. From the land of Mira to the far east, across the mountains. So we have mirrors to the Drang east, Lake and her name is Lucatiel. powerful souls, and so I came to claim my share. Did you now? But what a strange place! Even the rumors did not prepare me. Well, get prepared. Get on that. You are an odd one indeed. I've always made a point of avoiding people. There's no avoiding me because I'm getting your face. Well, you've made a point of engaging me. I can see that you are mid-journey. If you require assistance, I will help you. So she actually is someone you can summon for boss fights. I come fights. from Mira, a land of knights. My sword is always ready. Don't hesitate to call upon me. Whatever happens, I won't be missed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, girl, drop that white soapstone. Drop that soapstone like it's hot. You are an odd one indeed. So that's all she's got for I us right now. Don't we do run into her later on, and we'll get more of her story later on, which I will not ruin for you guys. So, yeah, not, don't want to ruin that stuff for you guys. You guys got to discover that on your own. Uh, so there's more stuff over there that we really don't need. We'll come back. There's another wraparound way to get there. So with that said, I'm going to homeward bone it back, and uh, we're going to go ahead and level up uh, what I've got. And then that'll wrap up this episode. So next episode, we're going to go to Hades Flame area, which is the other branching path you could take at the beginning of the game, and uh, move forward from that point. So that's uh, what I believe I'm going to do. And eventually, we'll come back to the area I skipped in the fall Forest of Fallen Giants. That Actually, there's another bonfire there that I could get, but I'm like, eh, I don't care really about that spot. 
at all whatsoever there's just no items there that I really feel like I need but anyways anyways that's just me so hopefully this one was really fun for you guys. We actually got to fight a couple bosses. Um, again, please let me know some feedback in the comments for guys who are watching this. Uh, what you guys think and want to see from me. I'm trying to do the best I can with the lore. I'm still discovering it as I've said. And I'm still trying to get down in my head like the lore can. And like, okay, this is this location. This is the lo this location. They actually changed some of the item descriptions from the beta, I've noticed. So uh, that's kind of interesting to me. So that's why I'm trying to really refigure everything out. But, um, and get all this cannon down in my head and talk about it properly. Emerald Bearer Herald, what's up? Seek, seek the lest this land. We're gonna level up a whole bunch. You ready for this? Are y'all ready for this? Bum, bum, bum. Okay. So, oh, I also, ooh, wait, we're gonna come back to her. We're gonna use the large Titanite Shard first. And have I gotten... Nope. So, you can burn human effigies on bonfires, but I'm not quite sure what they do yet. I imagine, and because I haven't gotten to the point where I can do that, see those numbers at the bottom there, those ones. I imagine when you burn human effigies at a bonfire, it increases that number. Now it could also be the bonfire aesthetic that does it that increases that number. That could be the case too. I'm just honestly not sure. Whoa! Wait a second. Wait a second. Ah, oh, okay. I thought it was worth a try. Did I get this? I forgot to last time. Just, you know, not much, but it's something. I'm not dead, man. Don't give up on me. We're gonna reinforce uh, our sword once again. Hattie Knight Sword. Uh, so you can see the Drangle Egg stuff takes that Twinkling Titan Knight. Once again, get this even better. We're, we're all sorts of pimping now. We got, I love this uh, Roman Legionnaire looking armor. This is a really badass. So, let's go ahead and level up. Probably get some more, um, vitality. Not of vitality. The curse. But some more stats so I can use that. This. From the Emerald Herald. Vita it was Vitality. I keep on thinking Vigor is Vitality. That's where I'm getting thrown off when I'm talking about it. So up, uh, I got so many level ups to do here. This is great. Gonna level up that, and... Yeah, I, kinda, I like that. I'm okay with that. I wish I could do this a little more, but eh, okay, whatever. I really like agility. I'm sorry, guys. I love agility. So hopefully I can kind of show, but you actually do drink your Estus Flask faster the more agility you have. I'm, I'm pretty dang positive about that. And we also look at our equip load here. Um, and I could probably unequip the blue wooden shield if I really am worried about my load. But I'm still at 61, so if I drop that, I'd be at 59. I like the blue wooden shield, it just looks cool on my back. Even though I don't use it. At this point, I could equip the buckler if I wanted and have that extra counter, but. Oh, large leather shield. Remember that thing? This one's really barren. And. I don't think we got it yet. I've actually started to find some items that. from the. Um, from the shield contest winners, but I don't think the blue wooden shield is one. I'll point them out as I get to them, and I know that they are, when I know that they are. Actually, Silvermont, if you guys know Silvermont, uh, he won, uh, his shield won a con the contest, is getting in the game. So, props to Silvermont for that. Really, really cool, our Alex. Really big props to him for that. Anyways, guys, thanks you so much for joining me. Again, I kind of went over an hour here, but I hope you guys are enjoying it, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Hope you guys are enjoying Dark Souls Heat Edition! <laughs> See you guys next time. Peace.